Coming up during our first intermission, do you know who holds the record for a most points scored in NHL history by an American? He's Joey Mullen from New York City, and he and his brother Brian have proven that you can start out playing street hockey and end up playing in the NHL. That's during our first intermission, but now it's off to the Kiel Center, where Mike Emmerich and John Davidson are ready for today's Red Wings Blues game. who this spring have become masters. Many think the proud red-winged wheel jersey will after 40 years be worn by champions. But lots of sweat and sparks and fire come first. Not easy work, especially today. Fox Sports presents the National Hockey League. From the marvelous, raucous Keel Center in St. Louis, the hottest team in hockey, the Detroit Red Wings against the St. Louis Blues. Hi everyone, along with John Davidson, I'm Mike Emmerich. Boy, what an exciting day we've got for you. First of all, the Detroit Red Wings, best team in the league. They're unbeaten in 11, only one loss in 19, and chock full of stars. Well, they certainly are, Mike, and this is a team that set a team record in winning seven straight on the road. Of course, they're led by their superstar up front, Sergei Fedorov, who last year was voted the most valuable player in the league. You know, there's not many athletes in the world who can bring fans out of their seats. Fedorov can do it making those types of moves. And remember this, on his right wing is Steve Eiserman, another big-time star with the Detroit Red Wings. And then St. Louis, five straight home wins, and they've got their share of star players, too. Well, they're coming off a loss, and the coaching staff wasn't happy, and they've driven this team very hard the last couple of days in practice. But, of course, they do have the star, the man who revitalized hockey here in St. Louis, and that's Brett Hall. Now 30 years of age, but he does lead the team in scoring, and that's nothing new. A little note of interest with Brett is that he has gone back to an aluminum hockey stick for this game this afternoon. I think he wants to score even more. Holding a wooden stick, the guy they call Cujo, Curtis Joseph, 28 later this month, six wins in his last six decisions, his 27th start in the team's last 30 a workhorse. 32-year-old Mike Vernon, unbeaten in 16 starts. He has not lost a game in two months and a week. And he's been part of this Red Wings resurgence. In charge of the game today, Rob Schick, the referee, Dan McCourt, and Mark Perry will be the linesmen. Slava Fetisov and Paul Coffey will start on defense for Detroit. Iserman, Kozlov, Fedorov up front. McKinnis and Barron for St. Louis. Creighton, Hull, and Shanahan. What a collection of players to see on the ice at the start of a game. It certainly is. Coffey's been flying. He leads the Red Wings in scoring. McKinnis, number two for St. Louis, back after a bout with pneumonia. So it'll be interesting to see how his stamina holds up. A fooler by Fatisov. Turnaround shot is through the crease. Now Paul Coffey waiting for it for Detroit. Shoots one that's deflected back down by Adam Creighton. Coffey putting the hook into him. Fatisov twirling for Detroit to Fedorov, but that blocked by Hall. There is a sense among fans and journalists in both these cities that this will be the matchup in early June to determine who goes to the Stanley Cup Finals, but the coaches and players don't want to talk about it or even think about jumping that many pages ahead. Yeah, I think right now with Detroit going so well, and Mike Keenan, the St. Louis coach, will be using this game as a barometer to see where his team is sitting with Detroit. Here's Bob Airy dropping it back. Cicerelli, a shot and a save made by Joseph. Rebound fed off by Airy. And we're going to get the first penalty call. First penalty will go against the Blues. It's a, an interference call, and the defenseman, Duchesne, will go. The first good scoring chance goes to Detroit. Dino Cicerelli was stopped. Mike Keenan knows that this game, he thinks, will be a defensive game, so he really wants his team to play smart in that area. This Detroit power play, ranked number three, will get a chance to go to look. Here's the rush up ice by the Red Wings. Big Fedorov goes right to the net on the right side. There's a shot by Cicerelli on the pass from Airy. And Curtis Joseph, who was pulled in his last start, made the good save. Now the interference, let's watch it in here. That's Duchesne moving up on Primo. You see how he can't get to the rebound. He's knocked down. So Duchesne sits for two minutes, or what could be two minutes. You have another fascinating part of this. Buffalo general manager Scotty Bowman at one time hired Mike Keenan to coach his team in Rochester, and they won a championship. You see Steve Duchesne sitting in the box, and Keenan remembers getting a lot of calls from Scotty Bowman at 1 and 2 and 2.30 in the morning to talk about his team in Buffalo and Keenan's team in Rochester. 
Paul Coffey hands to Fetisov. Kozlov in front. Oh. Score! Shepard! What a brilliant play right from the faceoff won by Primo. That did not take long at all for the Blues to score the power play goal. Fetisov will take the puck from Coffey. What a brilliant diagonal pass he makes. Watch Primo win the draw. Right away, the Wings have the puck. Now, when Coffey gives the puck to Fetisov here, look at this diagonal pass right now. Right on a crust. Now look to the right side of the goaltender. There's Shepard all by himself, and he has a lot of time, and he's a brilliant shooter around the goal net. And he scores the power play goal to get Detroit the 1-0 lead, which takes the crowd right out of it real quick. Well, that took eight seconds. And the first robot to celebrate is that of Detroit. Duchesne put it off the back of the referee, Rob Schick. But now Doug Brown up to Chris Draper and back in. The Red Wings are used to lead. They are used to winning. They are used to leading. First overall in the league for a week. First in the division and the conference since March the 12th. And they're very deep, Mike. They can sit people like Dino Cicerelli amongst others put them in for the next game and they just keep right on trucking this is a club that is so proud of its defensive play when they score and they get the power play going it's a bonus but their defensive play has been so good and now, coming Mike, up. Bob Rouse got caught pulling down Tikkanen who draws more penalties than any other St. Louis Blues player and has so for years when he played in New York or Edmonton so Terry Karkner gets the first Detroit penalty Play is stopped here at the Keel Center. Home team trailing 1-0. Red Wings shorthanded. They are splendid in special teams, as many championship teams are. They are tied for fifth overall in penalty killing, and as John mentioned, third on the power play. They've already shown what they can do with the power play. The season series of three games, in which it's 1-1-1. Between the two, St. Louis is 2-4-11 on the power play, which is not a good percentage. Konstantinov roughed up a little bit by McInnes. You look at this power play right now with the guys they have out, plus Curtis Joseph. This is 13 and a half million on a full season in salaries right now with the five Blues plus their goalkeeper. Steve Duchesne fed it off, drive right into Vernon and a good solid drive by Shanahan. Whipped back out by Mike Ramsey. A good setup, good quick passing, and Vernon's first save is a good one as he read the play nicely. One thing about Vernon, who's not big in size, he has to read plays. And he did just that to make the save off of Shanahan. This is Jeff Norton. Tikkanen gave it right up. Bob Airy starts back with Iserman. Over for Airy, taken out of the play by Tikkanen. Well, Tikkanen gave the puck away and had to fight back up ice to break up the two-on-one. He grabbed a hold of Bob Airy, who was driving to the net. Tikkanen... Grabbed him and pulled him down. So for 43 seconds, we will have even play. Each team a man short now. Tikkanen gave the puck away. And then he had to come back as hard as he could. Now he's over on the right side. He's got to catch that guy. That's Bob Airy. Eisenman will move the puck to the middle. Airy's going for the puck, and you can see Tikkanen drag him down. Boy, it's tough when you give the puck away. You have to recover quickly. And when you catch the other player and pull him down, it's a problem. You mentioned Tikkanen being a menace. It's not so much with actions as with words, is it? Or at least equal parts. It's the old saying, he could talk the wheels off a bus. <laughs> he's a terrific player. He's, he's a player that could do anything you need on the ice except for maybe play goal. Anything you need. Zombo pestered by Kozlov. Glenn Anderson. Tied up by Coffey. The former teammates in Edmonton. Walking it ahead as Fetisov and giving on to Paul Coffey. What a tremendous acquisition Slava Fetisov was. He's playing full time with Coffey now. What he does is take the puck from Coffey and now he'll try to give it back to Coffey and let Coffey just go. When Mike Ramsey and the U.S. won the Golden Lake Classic, Fetisov was on the Soviet team that finished second. But they didn't finish second that often in much. In the World Tournament, he played 11 times. They got the gold eight times. He had Olympic gold in 1984 as well as 88, and then he came 
to play for the New Jersey Devils. He took tremendous punishment when he first got here. He just thrilled to be with Detroit. Just thrilled. One of the better passers in the history of the sport. Cicerelli. Save made by Joseph. And lifted back down. Power play on with 47 seconds to go in it. Coffey and Fedorov. And Iserman out on the power play. To Cicerelli. Tried for Konstantinov, but it kicked over to Hall, and here he comes. Brett Hall moves in. Scott! Oh, baby, do you believe that? Last time these two teams met, Brett Hall scored a three-on-five goal shorthanded. Two men short. This time it's a one-man short play. Now, if we stop it here for a second, you see the pass up the middle, but look at Coffey going over there. That opens up the ice. The Hull will slow down to take a look. He's got the look. Wow, did he snap it with a wrist shot? Those aluminum sticks are working. Watch Hull know that he has time so he can glide in and take a look and snap it right through the legs, right through the wickets, and we're tied at one. Brett Hull with the shorthanded goal, the seventh shorthanded goal St. Louis has scored. And he has gotten the crowd back into this one. Still 27 seconds of power play. The third shorthanded goal for Hull this year. And you had mentioned that one that he scored five against three in Detroit that turned that game around that wound up in a tie. But he has gotten his 25th overall. Ray Shepard got his 25th earlier in this period. It's amazing how players can realize that they have a sense of time. And when Brett Hall was moving up ice, he slowed down, slowed down, slowed down, because he knew the player couldn't catch him. He took the look right through the legs and just snapped it. Paul Coffey pointing out something to the referee, Rob Schick, and I'm not sure what it might be. It looks like they're pointing up into the stands. Barry Smith, assistant coach of the Red Wings. either sure exactly what it is Mike I don't know if there's a light up there sometimes a goaltender will complain if there's a light up above bothering somebody Mike Keenan has 498 career wins including 81 in the playoffs 45 years of age Scotty Bowman he's got 1049 in his career a legend 61 years of age you know what he doesn't do he doesn't fold into anybody does it his way. The players are now believing in Scotty Bowman, and they're on a roll. Well, he had some convincing to do in yes, Detroit, didn't yes, he? Yes, he certainly did. But the team, I think, now believes in, in what he's what he's doing. The 1,049 wins includes the playoff victories. Mike Keenan has a phrase for it, and both of these coaches have accomplishment. Getting everybody to buy into the program. As best we can tell, everybody has bought on both squads. Deacon and out of the box, and he stays on the ice. In this 1-1 tie, Shepard and Hull with their 25th goals of the year. The standard by which you measure goal scoring in the NHL is 50. It's like a 21 season in baseball. The Perrier with his first shift, number 22 for St. Louis. Got the puck now. He loves to hit. It's his first shift. He wants to make an impression on his coach, and he already threw a body check. You had an example of why Tikkanen is not well liked, and there's a little more right now. He and Martin were point going at each other. Meanwhile, in the game, it's rolled back into the corner. There'll be a penalty coming out. Oh, boy. The waltz is going, isn't it? The Perrier came off the bench, skated right across the ice and threw a big body check. And it seemed as though all the other players on the ice wanted to follow his lead. Here's Tikkanen and Karkner. They meet up. Karkner now has position on Essa Tikkanen. The bench is a little involved. Tikkanen's always in the middle of things. Very effective. And there's Kozlov and Tikkanen getting involved. Good job by the linesman breaking those players up. Somebody has a hold of Tikkanen's stick there, I think.
A 1-1 tie here in the first period. Mike, as this game moves along, you now have Brett Hull playing center ice. Mike Keenan will change his lines up a lot. And, and I just love it when he... It's hard for another team to match up against Mike Keenan because you never know what forwards you're going to have and what combinations are going to be against you. Here's Brett Hull playing center ice. Keegan and Shanahan. Pretty impressive collection of players out there right now. When, you, when your power play is in a situation when you get to do things like this, it's really tough to defend. Here's Keith Primo. Twist from one. That shut down, and it's Steve Duchesne. Then on to McInnes, moving with Shanahan. Brendan Shanahan feeds Tekin and a shot, and it's blocked away. Konstantinov got in the way of that one. Duchesne across to McInnes. Nearing the halfway point of the power play. Off hole stick and then the leg of Tegan. They go off from the crowd and the puck cleared. Real strong clear by Detroit. What it does is it takes those fine offensive talents and puts them on the bench for St. Louis. And they come out with a different unit now for their power play. Bob Airy got in the way of that one. And so it's Norton. St. Louis had looked to get him here two years ago, but the price from the Islanders was too steep. Got him this time, and boy, do they like him. It is Norton again. Just 20 to go. Penalty coming up. It'll be on Detroit. Now, Bob Airy, he was skating to the bench, and he just skated by one of the Blues players and just chopped his leg with a stick, and it was, oh, 30, 40 feet away from the play. And uh, Scotty Bowman will term that in his mind as a bad penalty. There's Bob Airy. He's now been told. Head across the ice to the Chateau Bow Wow. Little doghouse. He got caught. With either of these coaches, there's really not much doubt if you're not on their high list. No, they don't. Uh, they're not shy, are they at all? <laughs> in fact, Mike Keenan uh, publicly in the newspaper today here in St. Louis was questioning the conditioning of Curtis Joseph. He wants it to be at a higher level. So he's pushing him somewhat publicly. And with Detroit, Scotty Bowman's team has worked hard on discipline all season long. Now the number one unit for St. Louis power play is back on the ice. They have 15 seconds of a two-man advantage. And with a faceoff of Detroit's zone, if they win the draw, if Shanahan beats Primo, St. Louis has a chance to set up a real good play here. Four men in, only one man back, and that's Duchesne for the Blues. Do they ever have the Gunners on their power play once they get it set? Duchesne can bring it, and McInnes is as good as there is anywhere. Primo. You see, he's developing into maybe the most underrated player in the league, in my opinion. Primo wins the draw nicely. That knocks off most of the two-man advantage with only four seconds to go before the point jumps out of the box. Tekin in ahead, and then along to Shanahan. Slip one in front for Hull. First man is back. Now it's a five on four. Duchesne looks to Shanahan and gave to him. Duchesne twisting from Primo. Good save by Vernon on a steaming shot. This has not been that good a power play. But with that kind of individual skill, can they ever test you? And Vernon has passed the test so far. Two real good chances. McKinnis, the defenseman, was right in front of Vernon. Vernon robbed him, and then he made a great split save. On Duchesne, the other defenseman who moved in. Here is Hall. Creighton to the net. Guided wide by Creighton. Red Wings up with it. Still with a lot to kill, though. Ramsey set Norton down. Puck kept by Hall. Had the gun loaded. Fire. Score! <laughs> This will be a real good look at it. You see Hull back at the point. He's going to take his time. And look at all the line. Three Red Wings, one blue. Hull weighted, double pumped. And there's the shot taken. And you can see Mike Vernon had no chance simply because he didn't see it. 
Mike Ramsey, the defenseman, way up and went down on one knee, and that really screamed Vernon. Hull didn't shoot the puck that hard, but it was deadly accurate inside the goal post. Well, he's been a steamroller with his shot ever since he was at the University of Minnesota Duluth. A 50-goal season in the American League. And a ton of 50-plus goal seasons since he came to the NHL. Well, it is full-strength hockey. And since the scoring of the shorthanded goal by Hull, the game has changed a lot. Anderson snapped out of the air by Vernon. Oh, Vernon upset with himself. He gave the puck away. He was in behind the net. When Anderson read the play, Vernon had to scramble, but he bailed himself. Oh, what a save with his glove. Mike Vernon gave the puck away. He better get back quick. Give it and take it away. Look at the save on Anderson. Oh, my. That would have been three for St. Louis. That may have been the hook for Mike Vernon if he didn't bail himself out. Red Wings take the face off. John, you've been around locker rooms before at the time of deals. Bouncer in on Vernon and he hangs on. And even though this one was over the summertime, you had to think that collectively at their home sprinkled across North America and over in Europe, the Red Wings as a team had to think, boy, this might be it. Because now we got the guy that can do it in the playoffs. Actually, Scotty Bowman called me prior to that trade, wondering about Mike Vernon. I spent two years living in Calgary where Mike played for the Flames. We got to know Mike quite well. Know a lot about how competitive he is. Then they went ahead and made the deal. Coaches will call or general managers will call people all over the hockey world to ask opinions. And Vernon has settled down the entire city of Detroit regarding their goaltending situation. The point tied for Shepard. Then for Anderson. Caught at by Karkner. Rugged defenseman sends it back the other way, but it's off skates. Laid ahead now for Chris Draper, but offside. We're talking about Vernon, Mike. The other thing that he's done that's been wonderful is he's settled down the other goaltender, Chris Osgood, who's much younger, so they've both played well. Pittsburgh looked like they're playing with a lot of fire. They've won their last three against Philadelphia, which is one five straight. And you get Ken Reggett back in goal, settle down that position. And with only about 10 games remaining, that'll give Reggett plenty of time to get himself in the top shape coming back from the ankle injury to set himself for the playoffs. A pair air taken out by Primo. Kicked across for a dump back in. Chasse sends it over. LaPerriere flew into the glass. Penalty coming out. Will this be Chasse for a hit on Bob Airy. Airy took the last penalty for Detroit. This time he may have drawn one. Yes. Boy, a lot of power plays here in the first period. Wow. Chasse in the box. Detroit going on the power play, and John, you'd have to think that if we get into power play roulette here, that favors the Red Wings. You would think that, Mike, but, you know, we've got Brett Hull already with a shorthand. Maybe it, it depends on Brett Hull as, as to how the Blues special teams will go. He's got the shorthanded goal. He's got the power play goal. So it's actually 2-1 in favor of St. Louis on the specialty teams here in the first period. Third-year captain of the St. Louis Blues, Brett Hull. We can go on and on about this guy. He has averaged 68 goals in his last five full seasons. If you prorate from that 50 goal standard we had mentioned earlier to the shortened season, to have a 50 goal type of year, you need to get 28. Hall has 26. You know, most great goal scorers who play the wing, left wing or right wing, need a terrific centerman to give them the puck. Like you think of Cam Neely in Boston, you've got Adam Oates. Adam Graves with the Rangers last year over 50 goals. He had Mark Messier. Brett Hall can score over 50 goals on his own. He doesn't necessarily rely on a great number one centerman. Buck back to Fatisov. Hall got in the way of that one. And the Blues clear. Cicerelli now upset with Carbono. This is a very heated rivalry. And the discipline level here in the first period hasn't been very good with both clubs. And Rob Schick, the referee, has been very tight in calling almost everything. Dino Cicerelli did not play two nights ago in Chicago. He was stuffed up with a head cold. Said he could play, but Scotty Pullman said, Oh, no, I'll tell you, you'll miss this one. We've got plenty of players. Somebody else goes in. But Dino's back in today and ready to go. 
played with Detroit. He played on the right wing for Fedorov. Played on the right wing for Eisenman for a year. And most of this season, he's been with Primo. How's that for three pretty good centermen to play with three different years? He was told he was too short. And then he had a devastating injury to his right leg while playing in London, Ontario in junior hockey. Hit a piece of debris on the ice with a skate. Broke his leg, and he had to have a 15-inch rod put in the right leg. And it was kept there for over a year. He's kept the rod as a souvenir. But a miracle that he's had a career. Here's Coffee ahead. Shot went off a glove and into the seats, but no matter, it was offside. Oh, and he gets wrapped up a little bit by Duchesne for the late shot, or what the Blues perceived as a late shot. Well, the linesmen are going to be busy all afternoon with this game. A lot of scrums after whistles. A Canadian newspaper, the Toronto Sun, ran a poll. Oh, baby. On the best of this, the best of that. And Paul Coffey's known for skating, but he was also ranked at the top for the hardest shot. And he took the last shot on Joseph, who made the save after the whistle. As everybody continues to go. Carbono was mixed up with Cicerelli a moment ago. And this time, it's Carbono and Coffey. Now Primo wants in. Mike, in this situation, the referee can call a lot of 10-minute misconducts. Everybody's going. Nobody's really separated and, and fighting. A lot of pulling and wrestling. You pretty much have the Rabbits out here right now instead of the Bears. Now, in the prior three games, there have been fights in each one, but usually involving the Bears. And Primo looks like he's being held off, getting in, and Shanahan's in the middle of this. We call him a Bear, though, right? Shanahan is a bear. Primo is a bear. Yeah, okay. Now some of these other guys yeah, have right. olive branches, but that's they're right. designated guys at the yeah. bench that can fill in the bear role. Yeah, maybe that's why they're all wrestling and not really separating and getting into a more serious waltz. Well, very heated game. This is the last game of a tough trip for, for Detroit regarding their travel. And St. Louis has been pushed hard, very hard the last couple of days by their coaching staff for indifferent play. But the passion level here in the first period is extremely high with both clubs. Shepard first the power play goal, then Hull shorthanded, then Hull on the power play. 7.58 to go and Paul Coffey is leaving. They know, they, they, the linesmen are ushering people away, so these players are now on their own. Carbono, Shepard, Burr. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, I think it's Burr back in there. I may be wrong. No, it's not. I apologize. It's Primo and Shepard. Kozlov, Matisov. And now they look like they're all going to separate. Bombastic first period. 2-1 St. Louis. And no, Stu Grimson has not been on the ice. He has a terribly blackened left eye. He was involved in a scrap with Jim Kite. San Jose Sharks a few days ago. Grimson, big, tough forward for Detroit. Detroit felt that they needed to get themselves an enforcer at the trade deadline, and that's the man they acquired. I don't think with the damage he appears to have with his left eye, he'll be playing too much in this one. It was fortunate for them because their premier boxer had been Darren McCarty, and McCarty, shortly after Grimson arrived, had a knee injury and hasn't been able to play since. The Grim Reaper, he's known as. <laughs> he had three scraps the other night at Joe Louis Arena. And in three scraps, can you become a huge favorite? Well, Before 19875, yeah. he was. Sound, sound crazy. All those big guys are the lovable guys in this game. They're going to draw a line there, and it'll stick on May the 4th. And if that is the same as it is today, San Jose gets lopped off. But don't forget, San Jose is playing Los Angeles in San Jose. Detroit, and the Paul Kings have lost three straight. Two minutes for roughing, two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct, and a ten minute misconduct. Number 55, Keith Primo, a ten minute misconduct. For St. Louis, number 28, Steve Duchesne, two minutes for roughing. Number 19, Brendan Shanahan, two minutes for roughing. And number five, Jeff Norton, a 10-minute misconduct. Time of the penalties, 12.02. Mike, I don't believe there will be a power play handed out after the scrum. A couple of 10-minute misconducts to each team. We'll get that for you in a moment. Here we are. 
Primo, a champion in Biscanda. Coffee got two, two, and ten. That cancels out the Shanahan and Duchesne roughs. So you're right. It will just remain 31 seconds left on the penalty to Chasse. But Scotty Bowman loses their leading scorer, Paul Coffey, for 14 minutes. And what's and what's been a specialty team type game, he'll be missed in that role. Norton, the defenseman for St. Louis, gone for 10 minutes. Primo has, has maybe had more ice time than Fedorov here in the first period. Good point. He loses uh, 10 minutes of game time. So that means Fedorov will get more ice time now. They didn't practice yesterday, the Red Wings. It's been a long trip. So they just went to a gym here locally. Rode the bicycles and did the usual work with the weights. Stu Grimson and Martin LaPointe played catch with a football today down in the locker room, which caused a lot of ducking. They even had the football out on the ice, but it's a bona fide Detroit Lions football. Sanctioned by the NFL. I mean, these guys are Detroiters. Well, now we're down to the last 17 of the power play. Iserman tried to connect with Fedorov. That failed. Near McInnes, it pops. Hall carries deeper. Batiste off waiting. For Iserman, but Barron. Penalty time is up. Chasse back in the play. Cicerelli behind, but Barron threw it off. Batisov kept it alive. Read by McInnes and floated back. 7.15 to go on the first. Hull with two. Shepard with one. St. Louis ahead. It's better off. Iserman a backhander and a save made by Joseph. Guy Carboneau, watched by Fedorov. Good defensive work by the one-time Selkie Trophy winner. Ahead now comes McKinnis. And he was defending a guy who won it four times in Carboneau. Down behind, getting in the way was Stu Grimson. Grimson trying to jam it loose. Adam Creighton hit the back of the net with his centering pass. And Grimson again. Off of Creighton, the two of them collide. Moving in is Creighton, pursued by Grimson. Great wraparound is tough for a goaltender because of the long, long arms and long stick. He's got the long reach. And when he swings around, creates a whole new shooting angle. Now Glenn Anderson gave it up to Karkner. Has the game level out for Detroit after giving up those two? I think a little bit. Still, it looks like the game now is settling into that defensive style game that both coaches expected. Passion level is still there, Mike. Now there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. Boy, was Grimson ever reaped by LaPerriere, yeah. and that'll cost him. And we told you LaPerriere loves to hit. Grimson put his stick up in a defensive position. LaPerriere went right through the stick. It's like Grimson doesn't have one now. He's over getting a new one. He went right through it. The penalties will even up. The game is not even. It's the Blues by one. Grimson gets ready for the big hit. That's LaPerriere. Oh, my. Watch this. Look at the right hand there. There's a broken stick in his hand. The hit by LaPerriere went right through the stick that Grimson had put up to protect himself. <laughs> Both players end up with a penalty. Don't think Grimson got some life coming from Anaheim to Detroit. He said, I went to bed in last place and woke up in first. <laughs> With Perrier, he comes off the bench for Mike Keenan four or five times a period. He's like a laser beam heading for, a, for the puck and whomever's holding it, and it's just body on body. The Perrier got a charge. Grimson a cross check at 14.02, so this is four aside hockey. And the Blues in the lead, two to one. Draper feeds ahead. Shepard tried to cross, but in the way, McKinnis. This is where Coffee is missed for the Red Wings. This is where Coffee could just fly with open ice. And now Tikkanen's down, and he draws his second penalty of the period. Maybe more penalties than anybody in the game. Does Essa and draw, and Ray Shepard goes to the penalty box. This whole period is either power play or penalty killing. Here's Tikkanen on the puck. Shepard slaps away at his body, and you see the stick right down around the skates, knocking the feet right out. So, Grimson conferring with Detroit Shepard in the penalty box. And Detroit will have to kill off the Brett Hall power play. Saw so Sean Brewer there for a moment. Scotty Bowman wants a word with Rob Schick, who does not want a word with him. I think Scotty is trying to figure out the, what's going on here. Rob Schick is calling everything possible. He's not letting anything slide. And then maybe out of necessity, thinking that from the referee's point of view, that this game could explode. He's calling everything and slowing the pace of the game down because of it. 
And there's Scotty saying that it was a dive on Tikkanen's part. I don't think so in the replay we saw. No, it didn't look like it. Barry Smith and Scotty Bowman. Assistant coach next to the head coach. Looking on a four-on-three situation. And do the Blues ever have four? With Duchesne and McKinnis as the point men. Hull and Shanahan up front. The Red Wings go with Konstantinov and Ramsey. Far side, near side, and back. And Fedorov, the forward. Hull! And a pad stopped by Vernon, preventing the hat trick. It's a special sight to watch Brett Hull play when he's on the very top of his game. He took the last shot, and he was hooked, Mike. And it may have bothered his stick. He yelled over to the bench he wants a new stick. He just went and changed it now. He gets a little bend in his stick, and he hates it. He's got to have a perfect stick to shoot the puck. Here's Shanahan keeping it. Shanahan over to Duchesne. Now Hall. Oh, the new one is aluminum, isn't it? Yes, Hall it over is. to Duchesne. Hall, score! Oh, baby. Oh, it's hat day here in St. Louis. There's a thousand hats on the ice. It's snowing hats. Oh, baby, what a shot. Brett Hall had moved up by. He's taken a shot. He was hooked on the shot, and it was stopped. his own bench saying, I need a new stick, I need a new stick. Then he came up ice with a new one and scores the goal to get the hat trick. Watch this give and go. Give it, go, set it up. There's the blast. Two of his three goals through the legs of Mike Vernon. Here's Hull over the bench getting the new one while plays developing. His team's on the power play. He can take a little time. And Brett Hull, look at the eyes. He wants it. Look at the eyes. Baby, he's on a roll. We're going to have some delay here. Oh, my. The Phasers were on for the 23rd time in his career for a hat-trick goal. 25th, 26th, and 27th of the year in the span of almost 11 minutes. Gretzky has 49 hat tricks, Lemieux has 31. The only two players in the game who have ever had more than that man, Brett Hull. Earlier today, in the quiet of the arena, we spoke with Mike Vernon about the fears and concerns of facing this man, Brett Hull. His best asset is his quick release. He, uh, he finds a seam in the offensive zone between defensemen are between forward and defenseman he can find that seam they hit him and he can get a quick release away and I mean with Brett you have to be aware uh, all the time when he's on the ice finding seams and just the, the quick release well he had a quick release all right all right John let's let's go back and document this whole notion of sticks and how today marked a change for Brett Hall well Brett just he'd gone to a he's been using the aluminum stick for years he went to a wood stick huh. And it didn't uh, work too well. He wasn't scoring like he should have. He's back and with the aluminum. Four Brett Hull shots today. Three Brett Hull goals. It was giveaway day for hats here. A soft drink company handed everyone a hat. Looks like about half of them have already come down. Got their money's worth, didn't they? And the fans have already had their money's worth here in the first period with a Brett Hull show. Just spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Now, the rest of the hats can come if he scores a fourth one. Remember Mark nope. Pavlich at the Garden one night? They gave out hats before a Ranger game, and he scored five. <laughs> Everyone was bareheaded by the end of the evening. Brett Hull gets approximately 2,000 fan mail letters per week. And you can understand why. And they come from all over the world. The charisma that he has. He was very critical of his own team and the way they lost their last game up in Winnipeg. Just basically said they didn't play very smart hockey. When he said a little rougher than that. And he's gone out and been the example and the leader here this afternoon as his team has the 3-1 lead here in the first period. Plenty of time for Detroit to come back. Not often, folks, do you see Detroit give up three goals in a game, let alone a period or less than a period. There's a future John Davidson we just saw wearing a face mask at such a young age. This has been a thrilling chapter 
in St. Louis sports history, especially this week. The Rams had a pep rally yesterday for their arrival. A new 72,000 seat dome will be opened in the fall. The National Professional Soccer League's franchise, the St. Louis Ambush, won last night. They're going to the finals against the Harrisburg Heat. And then here at Peel Center, Red Hall with a hat. And this is the shot that Hull took, and he's hooked just at the end. And he didn't like his stick. He, he wasn't happy with that. So he went back up ice, yelling at his bench and pointing over there. Then he wanted a new one. So a quick handoff. Great job by the trainer. And Hull heads up ice. St. Louis in the power play. Watch him find the seam. Helps out there. Now he'll cut back, not stand still. And he gets the shot. And what a shot it is for the goal. Still four aside. Blues three, Red Wings one. Bringing it back on is Slava Kozlov. Can't get through. Sing song chant. I'm trying to pick it up. I think it's Vernon, isn't it? it That's razzing the, the Detroit goaltender. They long for the Blues fans to figure out who plays goal now <laughs> for the Red Wings. Al McKinnis. Scooped across for Duchesne. Both teams get a man back. And LaPerriere goes right after the man. Went after Bob Rouse this time. Creighton rolling it back in. Mike Keenan just loves LaPerriere's passion, his intensity, and his hitting. He's not huge, but he plays huge. Hey, let me apologize. It was an even strength goal, the last one by Hull. I stayed at power play. I apologize. He's had a power play goal, a shorthanded goal, and now an even strength goal. Terry Kartner pivots for the Red Wings. Teams are at full strength for one of the rare times in the period. Murray Barron goes back. And Glenn Anderson. Greg Gilbert sailed it back in. That's Gilbert who has played for three different teams with Mike Keenan as coach. Chicago, the New York Rangers, and now St. Louis. Around it is set for Kozlov. And Kozlov ahead. Well, this game has slowed down now. Angle back in, and here's Burr. Coffee's not on the ice. It slows the pace of any game down. He'll not be allowed back until the early stages of the second period. Anderson's pass brought back on by Burr. Sean Burr with a big 80-footer blocked away by Curtis Joseph. And back out by Duchesne. They rule the Red Wings could have played, so no icing. Detroit has the one power play goal. It was a great setup off the faceoff, and Shepard scored. Other than that, their scoring chances have been held right down. I think Mike Keenan will be very happy with the way his team's played. Defensively. Another penalty coming up. Petroff was hauled down by the youngster David Roberts, who will get the interference call. Roberts was checking his face for a cut. Fedorov was hunched over, but Roberts will sit, and the Red Wings late in the period will get a chance to get back to within one. This was center on center away from the play. There's Roberts it trying to hold Fedorov up. And watch Fedorov's legs just power through. Fedorov's stick came back and cut Roberts on the way down. The referee was right there and made the call. Detroit has a chance to redeem themselves here to climb back into the game with their power play unit. Fedorov's been quiet in this first period. Ray Shepard had not been in the early stages, and boy, when you figure they're going right back on another power play, everything seemed to be going Detroit's way until that Hall shorthanded goal. Well, Brett Hall just exploded. He's exploded through this period. Now with Coffey sitting out the misconduct, Kozlov will play the point with Fatisov for the power play, and Kozlov, by the way, is a forward. Back to Fatisov. Shoots one. Save. Rebound. Jam that, but Joseph has there's another play off the draw. Detroit controls the faceoff and quickly get offense. Fatisov doesn't have to use the big slap shot either. That was just a quick shot on goal. So Carbono has been a great faceoff man over the years, but there Shepard out hustled Barron and was able to control the puck and get the puck back. Look in front. It's Fedorov with a little deflection. Curtis Joseph with a good save and able to hang on. Fedorov. But right to the front of the net. He's waiting. He's facing Fatisov. There's the puck. Oh, there's the deflection and a good save by Curtis Joseph. Better off on Carbono. Puck chipped loose and fed on back. Kozlov a shot. Pat stop. Rebound. Back to win a couple of times. But the whistle blown. And Shepard just kept pounding and pounding away. St. Louis getting beaten on the faceoffs here by Detroit. 
And it's not so much the centermen, it's the people away from the puck. Now, Curtis Joseph, look at the goal stick, flat on the ice. Where's the puck? There it is, great read. Off the blocker, he's got to now prepare for two more low shots. There's one, and there's another one. And the puck was knocked loose. When you get into those scrambles like that, goaltenders will think low shots. Curtis Joseph read the play nicely. Carboneau and Fenner off again. But it's Al McKinnis blasting it back around. No change in the power play unit for Detroit. 58 in the first period. They only played 20. A lot of penalty minutes. And as John observed, the most important ones right now showing to coffee. Joseph jammed it off. Punch back to the point. Petisov hands to Fedorov. Tried for Petisov and got him, but the shot was deflected away. And now Murray Barron cranks it around. Now Brett Hall blocked the shot. And he just called Mike. What an effective penalty killer he's turned into for the Blues. His conditioning level's got to be very high. An effective penalty killer is a player that can do things quick. Quick hands, quick feet to get the spots to make things happen. And his conditioning level has to be exceptionally high to be this quick. Deacon and Shanahan are the two forwards killing the penalty now. Still 50 seconds of power play time to Detroit. A wet shot. Shanahan is offside. Offside. Initially, it looked like they were going to let that one go. Now, Curtis Joseph is a goaltender who changes hands on his goal stick when he handles the puck. And when he did that, he just elevated the puck over top of everyone. There he's cutting back. Now watch him change hands. Left hand to the top, bottom hand to the bottom. And now he's got the curve facing the puck and he just flips it up. Shanahan was heading up ice. Saying maybe I'd get a breakaway out of this. It didn't quite work. That looks like a set play. Did you have a no. colorful, vicious <laughs> face mask like that? No, not like that. Are you kidding me? We couldn't afford the paint jobs in those days. John Davidson played here for a couple of years as a St. Louis Blues goaltender. Eight years for the New York Rangers. Look at those fangs, that red toss. Hey, this is, uh, players that play here. Al McKinnis moved down from Calgary. Guy Carboneau's here. It's a great, great city to play hockey. It's a great sports city. Is St. Louis. Mike Vernon says the same thing about Detroit. Just loves it there. 28 years this team played at a place called the Arena that was built in the 1920s. They needed a more modern facility, and did they ever get it? The old arena has been stripped of all the seats and everything else, and it's just a shell, and it's up for sale. Well, Carbonell was knocked down. Another power play. Man. Carbonell was penalty killing, intercepted the, the puck, read the play nicely, then tried to freeze the puck along the boards, and Fatisov came over and hit him high. So Fatisov gets to sit in the penalty box. There's Carbonell. He's got the puck. He wants to freeze it up through the left elbow. Right into the kisser. Carbonell. It's been a very mean game. And Rob Schick has called everything. He has indeed. I had a teacher like that in the sixth grade. You just whispered he went to the principal. <laughs> so you think he's calling too much? But I you think, know, when you well, see, it shaped up the room. replay. Yeah. When you see the replay, he put the elbow right into yeah, Carbonell's face. Yeah. Well, the, the one byproduct of that was our sixth grade room was the quietest one in the building. <laughs> That's too boring, though. Huh? It's so. just too boring. <laughs> Rob Schick, number 16. The officials got to choose their numbers this year, and Rob Schick picked the one that he wore as a center fielder for the Calgary Automobiles playing fast pitch softball. They were the national champions in Senior A softball in Canada in 1988. Senior A is big time stuff. JB and Dave between periods, scores and highlights, and a marvelous week of tribute to the Mullion brothers, Joe and Brian who were presented with the Lester Patrick Award this past week for service to hockey in the United States. Right out of an area in Manhattan called Hell's Kitchen. Who would have ever dreamed that those two young men would be the stars that Joey still is and Brian was. Brian now working with the National Hockey League to do with roller hockey. And that's a great acquisition by the league. Better off pass, trickled on, taken by Rouse. Fedorov's pass was nearly picked off by Brett Hull again. He's just been so smart anticipating where the pucks are going to go. To the last 17. Fedorov, what will he do? Could not get by Duchesne. Draper back to Fedorov. Penalty time is up. Puck tipped ahead. Rouse across. Fedorov couldn't pull the trigger. Three to go. Who would have thought? 
The Red Wings scored first on the power play. No surprise. But that's all with a hat trick. Let's go back to our Hollywood studios and James Brown. The concourse at Keel Center, where they're pretty happy right now. St. Louis 3, Detroit 1, and a Brett Hall period. Oh, here he is on the breakaway, short-handed. Paul Coffey on the left cannot catch him. This whole play was set up, forcing a bad pass with Guy Carboneau. Hall took care of it, one another. Now here's Hall with a pocket, the blue line. Fake shot, double pump, now put it past Ramsey, the defenseman. Mike Vernon didn't see it, was he upset? Look at him, the goalie's hot. That was a power play goal, and this, by the way, is a power play goal. We weren't sure before. We've had it clarified. Hall buys some time. Perfect pass back from Duchesne through the legs. Oh, did he power that? The stick of Brett Hall. Look at it. Look at the bow to slingshot the puck in that direction as the puck comes right between his legs. The power that he has when he takes a perfect pass is amazing. Four shots on goal in the period by Brett Hall. Three goals. Game summary brought to you by Bud Ice. 23rd career hat trick for Brett Hall. No even strength goal so far today and a lot of penalty minutes and still a minute 23 on a penalty to Detroit that has to be killed off at the outset of this period. Afternoon games, family days. That little guy didn't throw his hat, did he? All right, Mike Keenan has done it again. He has made a change in goal at the start of the second period. John Casey will be in. In 40 games this year, there have been now 10 goalie changes by a guy who is known for changing goalies off. Well, I do not see Curtis Joseph on the bench, and I'm wondering if he has a problem health-wise. Maybe pulled a muscle or something on those last two or three shots. I don't know. We didn't notice him in any kind of pain, obviously. No, we didn't, but it was at the very end of the period when he got a little bit of action and he was spread out. His legs were spread out, his body was spread out. Maybe something happened physically with Curtis Joseph because I, that's the only thing I can think of, Mike. It wouldn't make sense otherwise. Okay, first thing for Detroit this period, kill the penalty. Yeah, absolutely. That's certainly the key for their hockey club. And they get everybody back, like Paul Coffey and Keith Primo, and then they can restructure themselves and get their game plan back in order. Constantino for the penalty killing Red Wings. Off of Duchesne, it bounces to Ramsey, and he slams it back off. Is this a team, Detroit, that springboards off the big hit much? Well, I think they're very workmanlike, Mike, more than anything else. What they may springboard off of is a great play by Fedorov or a great play by Coffey. Something along those lines. Well, here comes better off. 33 still to kill. Got the shot away, but it is McKinnis to bring it back. McKinnis for St. Louis. Leading in the game 3-1. to one. Still plenty of time on the power play to shake it back in. Mike Vernon out to stop it. And then Rouse. Kneeling block by Rick Zombo. Right on goal and a stop by Vernon. Kneeling block this time, skips away, and Duchesne has to cover. With 10 to go, it's David Roberts out of the University of Michigan. Big shot, and it got the glass. Rebound chipped off the side of the net. And Sean Burr lays it back down. Out of the box, Petisov. So, the first objective for Detroit, they killed the penalty. Sean Burr out to register some hits. Boy, did he take a whack back from Murray Barron. Meanwhile, at the other end, is Vernon swinging it along. Braden jostles with Kozlov. And Sean Burr. Burr has filled almost every role for this team. Defensive forward, checking all of the big players for the opposition before Federoff arrived. He's always assigned to Lemieux and all the tough guys, the big scoring guys. And his situation falls into being a cruncher, as Konstantinov is. Yeah, he's the guy that sets up the big hits. Primo does, and Konstantinov does. He'll step up and take the body. Detroit seems to be playing a little bit more emotional right now. Matisov back for this one. Cross-bodied by Creighton. Away from Kozlov. Chasse stepped into by Kozlov. But it's Slava Matisov with a pass that went off a skate. Well, this is really intriguing with the change in goal. Here's Gilbert moving in again. Gilbert gathers a pass on back. A hit by LaPointe. Draper hands it on. 
Driven back in by Grimson and a good rocket off the glass. John Casey out to turn that one along. Now it's Draper up with it. Draper beats the slot and a shot was shanked. Final point. Greg Gilbert ahead. Spirits it back off the glass. Jesse ahead. Grimson takes over. Rouse walking it back. This lob back in by Grimson and LaPointe will be the first one there. Trickle the pass in front. Turnaround shot by Grimson is swatted out of the air and played ahead off Basil McRae. Well, the Bears are out now. The Bears for both teams. Now it's Casey across to Steve Duchesne. Burr tried to play it back, but it's off the leg. Vitaly Karamnov moves in. Wedged off by Rouse. Jump behind, and Burr goes for it. Nearly hit by Basil McRae. Out of the scrum, it's McRae again. He and Ramsey go at it. Well, it takes a long time to go 15 feet, doesn't it? To Detroit's defensive style, Mike, they've got all five players right down around Mike Vernon. That's how Detroit has been playing this year. They don't care if the defensemen get many shots from the other team, as long as they take care of the area right in front of Vernon. Brown to Cicerelli. And play is stopped. No penalty on this one. 3-1 St. Louis. You think Detroit has established or re-established what it wants to after killing the penalty and after having a few good hits or not? I don't know, Mike, to this point. They haven't been able to establish themselves offensively. A lot of Detroit's offense is because they've won face-offs in St. Louis's zone. Three different times they've had shots because of it. Here it looks like there could be another. No, blocked nicely there by Glenn Anderson. Cicerelli pulled off by Barron. Cicerelli still trying to get away, held off by Barron, and he slots back at him. They go at each other hard. Now it's Primo. Keith Primo wheeling around in front. Kicked away. Triple fly to the net. Glenn Anderson tries to get to it, then it's Shanahan. Oh, my, was he hit. Dino Cicerelli was involved in front. What a war this was. Oh, my. Now Detroit starting to establish themselves with Primo, Burr, and Cicerelli on the ice. What action. Cicerelli was held up by Murray Barron, so he just turned around and gave him a shot right in the kisser. Watch this. He's held up there. Held up, held up, held up. Now he's going to snap. Bang! <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> That's warfare. That's the trenches, folks, in the National Hockey League. He goes to the front, knocked down, and they just kept right at one another. Dino Cicerelli, not nearly as big as Murray Barron, but he battles. And Dino will score a lot of goals around the front of the goal after battling just like that. Sean Burr, Primo. Primo threw a big, big hit into Shanahan. That swat by Cicerelli drew a reaction from the crowd. At the same time you were watching it, they were watching it on a big screen. Something you couldn't do at the older end. And Detroit ends up with a power play. Iserman. Onto the back to Kozlov, then to Iserman. Close quarter strike for Fedorov. Kozlov stepped into, nice little twirl away. Slava Kozlov controlling for Detroit. They trail by two in the game. John Casey out. Pitched along by Duchesne, but then Kozlov again. Iserman watched by Duchesne. Inside the box comes Fedorov. Iserman the drive, and it went wide. Batisov gave it up. Key Carbono looking for home. To chase, but he's off on it. Takes him out. Kozlov again. 113 to go on the power play. Taken by Creighton. Trying to get it a loose for Hull, but it's punched aside by Fedorov, who came back. Fans wanted a penalty. Play moves ahead. Fedorov and Shepard move in, and it's Shepard looking the traffic over. Off of Fatisov. Brendan Shanahan starts up the wing. Fatisov wanting to close. Save made by Vernon. St. Louis penalty killing is so aggressive that it's frightening. And Detroit, if they don't make the perfect play, back come the Blues with offense killing the penalty. Iserman whipped it around and Casey stops it. Casey's very quick at getting outside of the net to handle the puck as it's shot in. And he's stopped the puck three or four times here in the second period already. Duchesne prevails and makes the Red Wings chase. Point back now for Primo. Good battle.
Ball taken off. Closed off Konstantinov. Puck turned right back along again to Primo. Primo brings it on. Dino Cicerelli trying to get by. Couldn't one-hand it in front. Net is lodged behind John Casey, and so play stops. And a little more. Taking it involved now. As the Blues' passion level is very, very high in this game. It's something that's been missing since the trade deadline. Mike, it seems as though when St. Louis was playing before the trade deadline, they played very well. They may have relaxed after the trade deadline when St. Louis didn't do anything major. And Mike Keenan has worked his team the last couple of days to try and get them into the games and be sharper mentally, be sharper on the ice, and not play a careless game. Well, here his team has played very, very well and battled with this Detroit team well. Mike Keenan, by the way, knowing that this was a three, uh, make that a two o'clock start here in St. Louis, decided to bring his team here to a, to a restaurant in the Keel Center at 9 a.m. this morning to make sure they had proper nutrition. An earlier afternoon game, they didn't do it. He didn't feel his team was prepared as far as nutrition goes. So they had everybody here this morning at 9, and they were allowed to eat what they wanted, but they made sure it was just a real good meal for them. And I don't know what they had, but it's working. Well, you can't judge by the warm-ups, but I think you and I both agreed that the warm-ups for both teams did not really seem to have much spirit. Well, that was just like a little calm, wasn't it? Before the puck was officially dropped. The keep by Doug Brown. Now for Grimson. 46 seconds of attack time for the Red Wings on their power play, but no shots. See if it changes with Coffee back. First time back in almost a period. Pitched back by Tikkanen and then thrown in by Rouse. David Roberts flopped it ahead. Tikkanen on the wing. Powell flips. Doug Brown started it ahead, moves it on to Draper, then to Paul Coffey. Boy, already it's faster. Draper threw it wide. Big Stu Grimson around now for Draper. Draper wedged off. Grimson trying to knock it loose. Grimson feeds Ramsey. Blocked away by Casey. Close off by Duchesne. Lifted back in. 12 minutes and 15 seconds as of right now to go in the second. In case you're just joining us, you see the score, but you want to know who got him. Shepard on the power play, 67 seconds into the game, but then Hall shorthanded and two Hall power play goals. And a quiet house was quiet no longer. Cassé tries to work it along. Cicerelli's pass cut off by LaPerriere. Then Gilbert. LaPerriere got the glass with the shot. Cassé without a stick. In that surround sound and stereo, if you have the fortune to have that equipment, you are hearing some heavy hitting. Guided along now by Vernon. Paul Coffey wanting to fly it ahead. Got it on to Burr. Fires! Oh! Trying for the upper left, but he got the glass. Just takes three or four strides, and all of a sudden, Coffee sets up offense. Here's Karamnov. Check from behind by Fedorov, and it's laid back down. One of the rare times in the game we're going to have an ice. Seeing Detroit settle right in. Detroit wants a penalty here as Kozlov was interfered with by John Casey, the Blues goalie. None will be handed out. St. Louis by two. See the arm here of John Casey. That's a signal for his teammates that it's icing. Watch him interfere with Kozlov right there. Allowing his teammate to touch the puck and icing. Face off back in the Detroit zone. The point chase deeper by Glenn Anderson. Terry Karkner lofts it out. Pivoting is Al McKinnis. Primo feeds on across to Shepard. McKinnis was forced and the puck was turned over and I don't know how Ray Shepard does it but when he gets a scoring chance he finds a way to get it in and he delayed to go around John Casey the goalie watch the giveaway there as it's forced from Al McKinnis now watch Shepard take the pass from Primo and delay but wide 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 to know where to go so slide it and it was right underneath John Casey most shooters would just get into a position to shoot it right away there instead he has a rolling puck takes it wide and it goes right underneath the St. Louis goaltender and it's now 3-2 as Detroit gets one back
Shepard second of the game from Primo and LaPointe at 9-12. Credit LaPointe for intercepting the pass off his skate blade from Al McKinnis. The puck then went to Primo, and Primo's developing into a star. He made the quick pass across to Shepard to move in and score. Primo's brother, a first-rounder with the Buffalo Sabres, was able to skate with the Sabres the other day in one of their warm-ups before a New York Ranger game and was just thrilled. And he's just as big, by the way. How big is he? Huge. That's about it. Huge. 6'4", 220 pounds is key. Twisting his Batiste off. Out in front and better off shot was wide. Roberts can't get by Paul Coffey. Boy, it's looking like the advantage Red Wings right now. Kozlov in. Hit the outside of the net near the post. St. Louis having trouble finding offense. Detroit has gotten better defensively, and that's generating offense. Zombo off Hall and Fatisov ready to start him back. Nearly gave it up to Tikkanen though. Little Go pass feathered through and here comes Coffee again. What will he do? Coffee tried to go in the side. Coffee will go up ice on his right side nearly every time. He's done it for years and years and years and years. And he still can't stop him because of his great skating ability. He has a 10 size, size 10 pardon me, shoe. He used to wear a size six and three quarters skate. He's now gone to a bigger skate. Look at him, just speed and power. However, he lost the puck and it went just wide as Casey got a piece of it. Coffee used to take his foot and just jam it inside of his skates. And it got to be painful after a while. So he I went think. to a bigger skate this year and he's still been able to skate just as well. And I'm telling you, Mike, every time he gets a puck in his own zone, he goes up and he'll cut to the right side. And teams know he's going to do that. Yet, try and stop him. One of the great skaters in the history of the sport. He was saying that out in Edmonton that Wayne Gretzky was doing the same thing, dropping down about a size and a half. Now, what's a normal drop down from shoe size to size, skate size? Probably size, one full size. Unless Man. you're unless you're young, you buy them two sizes big, so you don't have to buy skates every six months. <laughs> <laughs> but dropping down three and a quarter oh, size, my that, that yeah. hurts to think about. Oh yeah, just it just jammed his feet in there, and after a while, I mean. Things start to grow on the side of your feet, huh? <laughs> from the pressure and everything, of bunions or something. Well, you can't wear socks if you do that. No, absolutely not. Icing stops the clock. Midway in our game. 3-2 St. Louis. Martin Lapointe was handed a minor penalty along with Ian LaPerriere for a little skirmish that broke out as we were at commercial. Nothing serious, but you see them drawing back at one another. Roughing minors apiece, and so it'll be a goalie and four apiece, but this time the Red Wings will have access to Paul Coffey's talent, though they don't start with it. They just finished a, a shift. The Detroit Red Wings game was being controlled by St. Louis, especially with special teams. Coffey and Primo had been given lengthy penalty minute terms. Once they've stepped back into the lineup, Detroit's whole game has changed. Boy, won a, sorry, Mike, my apologies, but they ever won a lot of face-offs in the St. Louis zone. Deacon and trying to move in, and Ramsey on him. Well, they are talented up the middle, aren't they? In scoring as well as in such facets of the game as face-off. Draper left it behind, but now we'll start out. 21 to 7, the face-off totals Detroit up. Shepard tried for the hat trick, and that's saved by John Casey. Carboneau lays it off for Tikkanen. Tried for Carboneau, follow up, McKinnon scores! The last goal scored by Detroit was on an Al McKinnis giveaway. This time he comes back and gets that goal back. It looks like he paid for it as his nose has been banged up a bit. Watch the two forwards, Tikkanen and Carboneau crisscross right here. But the defensemen don't go for it. They stay in their lanes. Harmless shot going to be taken on goal. It looked like anyway, but it found a way through the legs of Mike Vernon. And three of the four St. Louis goals have gone through the legs of Mike Vernon. Copies the screen. McKinnon's going to roll the puck. Slides it right on through. Vernon was going down. And by number 21, he well, he didn't need his 60-foot blast this time. Just a short, quick one. And it 
two-goal lead back for St. Louis. Did he ever get cut? McKinnis is showing a lot of stamina, considering he's just coming back from a severe bout of pneumonia. And he just had an awful time getting straight back. Here's Bob Airy moving in. Airy with a shot. Save Casey in the rebound. May have gone over the line. The Red Wings think they have it. Now there is replay in cases like this. They can review it up top. And the question is, did the puck cross the goal line? The red light with the goal judge never came on in behind, and they will be looking at it immediately. They're probably already looking at it upstairs, and they have to check it out. They'll have an overhead view. Did the puck cross the line? And the question is, the puck has to go over the line completely. Not a portion of the puck, the entire puck. Big collision. Where's the puck? And I know it gets fished out. It's on the goal line. Ooh, baby, that might be in. Hard to tell. Here's an overhead view. There's the puck coming across and over the goal line. I think on it's over head? on yeah. edge. Yeah. I think the whole puck was over the line. The line, the puck was on edge. Now, another problem we have is Casey gets injured here. As Harry runs into him, he was twisted around into the goalie. And Curtis Joseph, yes, the puck is in. And Curtis Joseph is out with a muscle strain to his thigh. And for precautionary reasons, they did not blow him back into the game for the second period. Now, John Casey's been banged up, and the Blues only have two goalies. They would have other goaltenders in Peoria, their IHL team, but that team is in the midst of its playoffs against Fort Wayne. The goal counts. It is a 4-3 game. But how healthy is Casey? He's still being attended to. Appears as though he's going to stay and hang in there. He's flexing his left leg. What a game this is. Bob Airy all the way up ice. Went around the defender. Drove to the net. Got twisted around. Flew into the goaltender. The puck found a way into the goal. Barely. And we have a 4-3 game in favor of St. Louis. And John Casey having problems with his left leg. Look at Airy. The speed around Murray Barron. He gets hooked into the midsection. And twisted around. And I guess in falling down. John Casey must have banged his left leg. But the puck found a way over the goal line. Airy gets the goal. Detroit's back in, trailing 4-3. Man, every shift something happening out here. The NHL rule was changed about a decade ago to where any available goaltender can be used if you are without two. At one time, it was any goalie on the lineup card, and that meant that a defenseman or a forward had to step in. There's going to be a penalty coming up on St. Louis. And Fatisov slammed one from 90 on goal. But a power play coming up for Detroit. They trail in the game, but now by one. Well, Detroit will have a chance to tie it up. Al McKinnis and Fedorov. Is that Al McKinnis or Howie Long? Look at the clothesline. Oh, my. Penalty I'm coming as Fedorov was just thrown to the ice. He had trouble over at the bench with his helmet in the back of his head. He was sore. St. Louis Rams uh, maybe looking at Al McKinnis. That's pretty good clothesline stuff. Well, they don't have to go far to scout him. About 15 blocks. That was summer off. Small cup a little. <laughs> well, here's Paul Coffey on this power play that Red Wings fans are hoping gets their team back to a tie. Steve Iserman could not get by. But now Iserman has Cicerelli, shoots off the stick of Casey and into the seats. It's amazing what Coffey can do. He led Iserman with the pass. Iserman got stopped a bit, but Coffey followed up. He followed his own pass and developed the play into the zone. Look at him coming from behind. Bang. Knock it ahead. Instant 2-on-1. Iserman with the pass, or make that shot with the man in front, Cicerelli. And a good save by John Casey. Casey looks to be okay after getting banged up on the last Detroit goal. 11-3 Detroit in this period. How much of all of this do you hang on number 77 with his return? I think Primo has something to do with it too, but Coffey is certainly the primary choice. Coffey has a great chance of winning the trophy for the best defenseman in the league, and that's what they call the Norris Trophy. There'll be three of them, Ray Bork, Chris Chelios, and Paul Coffey, in my opinion. Coffey may be at the top, the way he's played the second half. Iserman on over for Shepard, speed to the front, the block follow-up, and that's chipped back. A well, point comes back on. Both teams have gotten a man in, and it's thrown right into Casey, and he goes down. He made a save with his catching glove. That was deflected by Dino Cicerelli. Well, the point jumped out of the penalty box, and his penalty box was nearest to the St. Louis zone. And did he ever come out nicely? 
Cicerelli faces him. There's the shot. Look at the deflection. There it is. What a beauty. Right into the hands and into the body of John Casey on the angle. Vito Cicerelli loves to sit around the goal net. Tries to find open space and he's got such great hands. He can get those little deflections that mean a lot. Well, I don't want to mind read into this thing, but I didn't think Casey was quite right when he went down that time and came back up. It was his left leg that's bothering him. Better off back across. Batisov wraps it around. Swirls back up to Paul Coffey. Coffey with a shot. Deflected. They fight for it in front, but it's chipped back out. Mike, I thought Philadelphia with Lindros, Brindamore, and Craig McTavish would be the best face-off team in the game today. After watching Detroit here in this one, it, it, it's surprising how good they are. They may be right up at the top. Well, the ratio is just controlling drives. Ratio is above three to one. Petisov gives it on a cross. Paul Coffey to Petisov. One timer! Oh, and they were trying for that when it went off the iron. Caught the right post. Nemo on back. Petisov gives it across to Coffey. Petisov again! Score! Stand in front of goals, you get pounded. Ray Shepard was standing in front of John Casey getting pounded, getting pushed, getting shoved, getting cross-checked, yet he stayed there. Look at him in front, look at him battle. There's a cross-check to his back, there's another one across the arm, yet he stays there. And here's the shot. Barron turns and it goes off his ankle right through John Casey. Barron turned to pick up the Red Wing on the other side. There's the shot. Primo standing there, Barron went to get him. And it went right off the skate blade. Uh, Baron maybe touched Primo's stick. I don't know. But we're tied up at four. Notice any perspiration on those robots by right now? <laughs> I saw one going oxygen. Quick <laughs> oxygen. We played over half of regulation time, but just over half. Eight goals. A lot of hits, Some wonderful opportunities. A hat trick by Brett Hall and Shepard with two. A two on one, Sean Burr moving in. But he dropped it away from Grimson. Chasse turned it back to Basil McRae. Burr up with it again. Tried to pitch it in, but it got tangled momentarily in the equipment of Donald Dufresne. Gray just pushed it further. Matisoff, Harry, and Shepard with two. Grinson oh, oh, oh. nailed Primo. <laughs> Both were in red jerseys. McCray, fed one in front off skates. Paul, fire, score! <laughs> writing it down in pencil and using an eraser a lot. 
Can you put Hall in an ink yet? Fatisov. Dump this pass. Chip loose. Fatisov back after it. Boy, is he seeing a lot of work. Eisenman worked over by Norton. Out in front of backhander is saved. Now watch Casey get up on that play. He got up in a hurry. Looks to be okay. Think about Casey. If he's bothered his left leg, you may worry about him during the intermission. Will it tighten up after the second period? Who owns your rights? <laughs> Easter and the Blues and the Red Wings on Fox at the beautiful Kiel Center. 19,260 and they get an extra thousand or so that want to stand here. Both of these teams on their home ice actually average above their seating capacity. People are just having a great time. Just a great time. 4.53 to go here in the second period. The Blues have a one goal, 5-4 lead. Red Hull's back on the ice. Something will probably happen here shortly. And Coffey is on the ice for Detroit. And he's got it. Shoots one. And it's knocked down. Iserman spun one on goal that went off the stick. Backhander. And that one kicked out. All because the Red Wings won a faceoff again. Iserman got body position on Norton and walked away with it. Pass tangled in skates. Fedorov able to recover to Iserman. Then back along to Sergei Fedorov again. What a battle. Coffey took over. Gave it up to Norton, though. Norton starts it ahead. A two-on-one for St. Louis. It's Hall with the puck. Tegan and fire. Save, Berman. Better off starts it ahead. Can they go on and on like this? Oh, I hope so, Mike. I really <laughs> do. I'd love to see a seven-game series of this stuff. A lot of people think that's just what they'll be. Gilbert could not get it through Fatisov. Back ahead to Iserman, across to Fedorov again. Fedorov got it through to Coffey. Off the stick of Casey. Red Wings were in the midst of changing, and the puck thrown right out of play at their bench. So Coffey moved down the ice, got the puck, and it slipped away from him, and St. Louis recovered. But Coffey's so smart, what he did was he grabbed a hold of Al McKinnis, just put his arms right around Al McKinnis' body to not allow McKinnis to go and think offense while Coffey was pitching deep in the St. Louis zone. You have to really be thinking out there. Paul Coffey's had some injury problems in the past. He went and saw in Calgary an acupuncturist to help his back out. And uh, whatever the guy did, it seems to have worked. Stick those needles in all over the place, you know, and get the numbness to go away. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Well, others are trying that now, perhaps because of Coffey's lead. Yeah. Back problems are... One of the things, especially with defensemen, I remember Pat Quinn saying about he was amazed that fewer defensemen didn't have back problems because you're in that bent-over position, especially in defending so often. Mike Vernon had the same person take care of his back when Mike was in Calgary. Maybe there's an acupuncturist or something between the legs there for the way the pucks have gone through his legs today. That's the truth. Chasse dumps it back. Pivoting is Bob Rouse. Rouse just shaking Chasse by peeling behind the net. Five to four St. Louis. Shepard rolling it along. It is Chris Draper. Points it back. One timer deflected. Now Brown spun one wide. Konstantinov floats it. But it's Adam Creighton bringing it back for St. Louis. Shanahan lays it to the corner. Mike Ramsey takes over there. Put it into the seats. Hull with four, St. Louis with five, Detroit with four. Back to action, Dino Cicerelli. Ramsey leads ahead, hoping for Primo. Creighton pitched it back in. Ramsey and Konstantinov, the defense for Detroit. Kicked by Eric, Sambo hurries one, deflected into Vernon, and he covers. A nice play. Zombo controlled the puck along the boards, put a good, hard, quick, low shot on Mike Vernon. Thing was that Glenn Anderson, number nine, darted out of the corner and got the deflection. Here's the puck moving up the board. Zombo will keep it in nicely right there. Now watch nine white in front. That's Glenn Anderson, the veteran. What a nice little redirection and a good, good save by Mike Vernon. Anderson has good hands, great hands. And there's an example of it. The hand-eye coordination. He was being hooked and pushed from behind, yet he still got the stick blade on the puck and Vernon with a save. And something new here. Detroit controls another draw. Amazing. 
Better off plopped it ahead. It's reached by Kozlov. And drilled back in. Both of these teams have 10 players on the roster that are 30 or over. And these are two of the five most free spending teams. They are both trying to do it big time and win the championship this year. You can tell by some of the age, especially on the defense, that maybe next year might be too late. Isn't it nice, though, to see the teams that spend a lot of money and they field such entertaining hockey clubs like this? This is very entertaining to watch. Two teams, they're just giving everything. This is just run and gun, give it a lot of hitting, goaltending, power plays, shorthanded goals. The big stars are playing well. Just wild. Little pass trickles across and Hall sends it just by taking it. As an old goaltender, you don't really like those one nothing pitchers duels, do you? Well, when you play in them, you don't mind them. <laughs> but when you sit up here and watch them, you don't like them that much. Watching this has just been fabulous. I mean, there's a lot of sloppy play at times out there that'll drive coaches crazy. But at the same time, the effort is there for both clubs. Big time effort. My partner had seven shutouts in 10 years in the NHL, plus one in the playoffs. Notice Chicago last one at 61. That's when Brett Hall's father was playing for the Blackhawks, Bobby. And the Maple Leafs in 67. The last year before the first expansion from the original six. Here comes Glenn Anderson. Nice little move by Kirkner to poke it away from him. And Terry Kirkner can move it back ahead for Detroit. Kirkner just waits, then shovels one that went into Shanahan. Will they get a two-on-one? No. The Red Wings with plenty of people back. Creighton locked up with Parkner. Rouse takes over for Detroit's defense. Oh, it nearly came to Hall. But now with 15 to go. Thrown in by Kozlov. Breaking in a Cicerelli. You said that a lot today. It nearly got to Hall. Red Hall is so smart without the puck and anticipating where the puck is going. That's one reason he has four goals in this game. And he's almost had a multitude of chances aside from those goals. Hall has four. St. Louis five. Detroit four. At the end of two. Wound up going to the finals and being swept twice by the Montreal Canadiens. But they have some glorious banners to celebrate their years here as well as that of four wonderful players including the active coach of the Boston Bruins, Brian Sutter, whose number 11 is retired. Now does Detroit show you what their plan is here by starting Cicerelli with Primo and Bob Barry. Here's Cicerelli, carried off by Murray Barron. Shanahan chips and steps ahead, moving with Anderson and Creighton. Fanned on his pass, second attempt is to Anderson. Hit by Cicerelli, but it's Creighton. Cicerelli crossed by Creighton. Primo got mostly bored from glass. Most times he doesn't. Big key Primo couldn't step away. And it's shipped on to Cicerelli. They start a three on two. Paul Coffey up on the play. Then to Cicerelli. Lays it over for Coffey. Coffey centered one, and it went off a skate. Punch back along. Red Wings continue the attack with Coffey's shot that's wide. Now it's Airy. Bob Airy pitches it on his backhand. Norton closed off by Draper. Adam Creighton shunts it ahead for Shanahan. Another brilliant first shift of the period by Paul Coffey. He was everywhere. Once again, now goes off for a change. Can he continue to play this much down the stretch and go right into the playoffs? He's a physical specimen, Mike. There's nobody in the league that works harder than Paul Coffey on his conditioning. And you see there, he will have a few seconds, a minute or two to try and recoup to get ready for his next shift. What coaches try to, to do when you look at a player as good as Coffey and you can see the numbers and the, and the awards that he has won, is don't overextend your shift on the ice. If you do that, it takes too long to recover your stamina to be able to go back on the ice. In other words, if you if you stay on the ice for a long shift and then get put back on, and if you haven't recovered, it'll affect your next shift or two or three. Go hard, get off, be ready to come back on, and go hard again. And that's what he's good at. Well, well conditioned athlete. What a hit on Konstantinov by LaPerriere. But it was after Detroit won another faceoff. It was 29 to 11 Detroit in faceoffs through the first two periods. The point checked. 
Donald DeBrain holds him. So Detroit, only two red jerseys in deep. All the other three are above the circle. Above the circle. Two men, and now they can go get it because they won the puck. Turnaround shot at the outside. Scooted right toward Casey by a skate. And it ricochets behind. Well, that was just good old-fashioned forechecking by Detroit. And then it recovered the puck nicely. You can hear Mike Vernon chattering to his teammates out there. McKinnis got away. Passed it around. Chasse couldn't come up with it. Chasse taken it back around. Chasse turned off the puck. Lifted up by Ramsey. Murray Barron brings it off. Just a one-hand shovel in deep. Mike Ramsey took what now have become obligatory hits. Almost everyone knows they're going to get hit once they touch it. Flung wide. And Barron again. Better off on him. Kozlov hooked down. Right over his back, the puck skipped to Tikkanen. Roberts trickles it through to Hall. Picks up Tikkanen. Dead for him. Saved by a sprawling Mike Vernon. Hall having that ability to just wait to the last second and then got it over to Tikkanen. It's one of the best games I've ever seen Brett Hall play. With the puck, without the puck, everywhere. He had it, but it was punched away by Karkner. The follow-up from Duchesne. Good defense by Karkner, or Creighton might have been alone. The two of them having an exchange at the front of the net. Pitched off the glass, another Red Wings change in lines. Three and a half minutes have been played. Batisov couldn't get it to the front. Basil McCray couldn't get it out. Rushed along by Cicerelli. Oh, big time hitting. Harry that time with a much larger Adam Creighton. Len Anderson. Hold it back in. Vernon swings it the other way. Harry takes it there. Paul Coffey quickly back across to Batisov. Harry knifed it a little bit on the backhand. Red Wings keep the same bunch out there, but the Blues are changing, and here is Chesse moving in. Offside call stops the clock. So it's still a one-goal game, and a good one. The, the Blues lead by one. Now here's two Red Wings deep. You don't want your third player deep, because if you get caught, you're in big trouble. Watch how one man gets pulled down. And then you're going to see another man get pulled down. And three men are deep. That opens up the ice. Terry Karkner pinches. That's a problem. All of a sudden, it's two on one. What a pass from Howell to Tikkanen. And there's Mike Vernon. A long, long, long road trip to get across and make a key save off of Tikkanen. St. Louis is a bright team with the clutching and grabbing and, and holding people up. And you saw it during that shift. A little work being done on a skate. Meanwhile, big Keith Primo will take the face off. Next to Adam Creighton. St. Louis got that one. And Al McKinnis walks it ahead. Move it. A low bridge. Matisoff went low, and over him went Creighton. Blues have three back. So it's not an odd man rush, and so circling for help is Coffee. Normally, the help for his circle comes right back from him and his gates. Here's Harry moving ahead. Watched by Barron. For Primo! Mike, you called it with Paul Coffey. He didn't dump the puck when he had nothing to do with it. Instead, he kept a hold of the puck. Why not keep the puck? Why give it away? Look at Coffey. He's circling back now to regroup. And Detroit now regroups. Watch them make the puck do all the work. Airy will go wide and watch this brilliant pass into big Keith Primo. There he is. Look at the reach and the strength and the little backhander that goes underneath John Casey. Great, great, great pass here by Airy to Primo. Primo's becoming a star. What a move. What a play. Primo's a big guy who's worked on his balance to be able to make plays just like this. Glenn Anderson was all over him, but Primo beat Glenn Anderson on the play. Still look like they've got energy. Man, 5-5 with a lot of time to go here. Over 15 minutes still. Coffey had the puck, had nowhere to go with it. Most players would just throw it down the other end of the ice. Not him. He backed up. 
kept up possession and Detroit just rolled up ice. Duck Brown battle. Out of a rugged front. Hit by Basil McRae on Konstantinov. Dufresne lost it. Konstantinov guides it across. The Grim Reaper, they call him Stu Grimson, 32 in the red uniform, pitched it in. Zombo dumped it back, and here comes Carbono in a three on two. Carbono bent one back. Basil McRae, cross shot. Zombo! to move up ice. It became a three-on-three three because the defenseman for Detroit got on the ice quickly. Zombo started the play. Now watch number four in the white follow up. Here comes those two defensemen at the blue line. Three-on-three. Three. three white jerseys, three red ones. But there comes Zombo. He was never picked up. And the shot went off the arm of Mike Vernon. It is now 6-5 St. Louis. Great play by McRae to set up this shot by Zombo. He'd probably rather be Fisher than playing hockey, actually. <laughs> he loves the outdoors. He makes a great shot here. Looks like Brent Hall. Off the arm of Vernon, and St. Louis gets one back. Well, you've seen everything our robots can do today. We understand they have searched the storage room and there's nothing more left for them. But they'll show up again if we have more goals and I'm wagering on it. Zombo from McCray and Carboneau at 514. Rouse over to Karkner. Flies it up for Iserman. Little tip. Read by David Roberts. Followed up by Karkner. Held up in the zone was Kozlov, the late offside right now. The big hall was quiet early, but it seems like a long time ago when Shepard connected on the power play to make it 1-0. Several times this year, that has been enough for the Red Wings to get to win a game. But not this one. 6-5, to the Blues ahead. In this game, the one thing St. Louis has done is kept better off and his line from getting points. Back to play. 11 goals have been scored. The bouncer is in on Casey. Head off by Zombo. Chasse sets it up for Ian LaPerriere. Vernon saw it go off his stick. Gilbert threw one that glanced off Coffey. Fed in close quarters to Gilbert. Great Gilbert locked up by Fatisov, but he escapes. Chasse taken care of by Draper. Perrier watched by Shepard. And it's kicked over to Fatisov. All Coffey. See what Fatisov does? Get the puck, give it to Coffey, and let Coffey go have some fun. Gilbert popped it back. Red Wings just in the midst of a change. Anywhere within five feet of the bench, you can make a change of players. Worked along by McInnes. And back down, and Mike Vernon. Patrolling there, throws it up for Ramsey. Little chip over to Eric. Pop back in again. Shanahan goes after him. Gets a rally on him. Left behind, and Kozlov hooked one along. Three Red Wings back there, though. If St. Louis moves quickly, they have an odd man rush. Here comes Cicerelli to bail his team out. To the eighth row went the puck. Another one will be back on the ice when we come back. I actually think in looking at this game to this point, you see that Fedorov has had five shots. I think Primo has been a more dominant force in this game at the center ice position for Detroit. Fedorov averages near four shots a game. He's had five already in this one. And his hair looks a lot better now than when that picture was taken. Here's Carbono around behind. Out in front and it's swept away by Terry Karkner. Terry. Boy, bumped heavily with Carbono. He's some ice bags after this game. Played ahead now to Primo. Moving on with Eric. 
of the balance of Primo. He didn't go down. He was hit hard. That's been the big improvement in this game. Primo closes Norton. Norton right back again. Jeff Norton, former USA Olympian, put it into the seats. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Hockey League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this telecast, including the imposition of a charge for viewing it without the express threat and consent of the National Hockey League, is prohibited. Watch Primo get hit hard by Duchesne, but look at him keep his balance. Rides the horse for a while, jumps off the saddle, and keeps right on going. He has just been dominant in this game, and this has been a hitting game, and a big player like Keith Primo, when you have the size and have the balance, you can be very, very, very effective. And there, it's just a great example of how he's shown his improvement. They've worked hard with his balance. He stays on his skates, and he's awesome. Why was he so heavily rumored for trade a year ago? Everybody wants him, because they saw how good he could be when he filled out with his body. And they, they everybody wanted to trade for him this time around at the deadline. But Detroit made him an untouchable, and after seeing this this afternoon, you can certainly understand why. Better off the coffee. Right away from Hall. Steve Eisenman, nine-year captain for the Red Wings, lays it back in, and it's Murray Barron to play. He's got the big boys on the ice here. Great talent. McKinnis and Coffey, the two defensemen. Hull, Eisenman, Fedorov. And so far on this shift, it's a, it's a chess match, and it's a stalemate. Now some of the players go, and they make their changes. Tipped by Kozlov. Red back by Chassé and Le Perrier tripped down. Seems to me, Mike, that St. Louis is using shorter shifts here than Detroit is in the third period. That may help them. Eiserman wanting to go to the bench for a change in lines. Had a little swat with his stick at one of the blues. Thrown back in by Le Perrier. Squipped over for LaPointe. Constantine off onto Ramsey. Matchup used by Scotty Bowman again on defense. The point, Shepard and Burr, the front line. Sean Burr had to drop it back. Team is on Zomb. Zombo to play. Uh, it's Plains, Illinois. Rick Zombo across now for the dump back in by Gilbert. Pivoting is Ramsey again. Right back to Mike Ramsey. Steps by one. That over for LaPointe. Across to Shepard. Shepard fires! Oh, and a screaming shot was wide. Shepard trying for the hat trick. Played along the route. Sean Burr brings it ahead. So be icy. Right. Play is stopped. Midway in the third, and the Blues have the lead by one again. 34-13, Detroit ahead of St. Louis in faceoffs. Well, now they become very important, especially Detroit trailing by one. Carbono very patient here, waiting for Draper. Draper beats him nicely. Well done to watch Carbono. And here he goes, he gets the puck. They tie, but it comes over to Basil McCray. Basil, double team. And eventually it comes to Kartner. Run back out. You had mentioned earlier that Brett Hall can score a lot of goals without a centerman. Did it surprise you that the Blues didn't trade for one at the deadline? Yes and no. I thought that Mike Keenan was in a position knowing that his team needs a number one primary center to compete with the likes of Fedorov or Eisenman if he's put at center or Primo. But I think Mike knows that he's in the first year of a rebuilding situation with the Blues. And when you have good, fine, young talent, why just trade it all away for one shot at it? So I think the Blues showed some very strong patience. And there was some thought that the Blues may trade Carbono away. Unload a, a hefty contract. Becomes a financial game at the same time as a talent game. Carbono was missed by Montreal, by the way. And the one player who misses him the most, maybe, Patrick Watt. Carbono was a player that could deal with the Montreal goaltender on the ice and in the locker room and had long discussions with Patrick Watt. And they're now thinking that, hmm, even though Patrick Watt has been playing splendid goal the last couple of weeks, this is Rick Zombo, who has scored the goal of record right now. 6-5. Gray's 90-footer handled by Vernon. Bringing it on as Petisov. 
again. Spun back in by Tegan. I think the Blues are changing quicker than the Red Wings here in the third period. David Roberts trickled it back deeper. This is where the battle is tough, especially in the corner. Rolled along for Tegan and again. Went right down again. Harry fed it across. Paul Coffey starts it ahead. Played on the wing, but away from Primo. Primo moves in and crashes Norton. Harry took care of his man. It was much bigger, too. That was Duchesne. But now Konstantinov. And again to the seats. Well, it's gotten more conservative now. But still tight at one goal. Dramatic start to this last 7.49. A lot of it just comes from the waiting in the tension building. It can be released by hitting, which we've seen consistently all day. There have been times that the game has slowed, but the hitting is not. I think Detroit, with Scotty Bowman, their coach, who just took advantage of the last TV timeout and put Primo's line right back on the ice. And Primo is throwing the body two or three times per shift. He's been throwing big, hard body checks. McKenna speeds it on. Glenn Anderson there. Vernon comes out of his goal, sweeping it along, but Shanahan shanked one in front that was grabbed by Vernon right out of the air. Mike Vernon's had a tough afternoon handling the puck, and that hurt him a little bit. We've been talking about size. This is the average this year in the NHL, 6'1", 196. A good example is Rick Zombo. 25 years ago, the average was 5'11", 184. An example of that today is Iserman. 50 years ago, Mike Vernon's size was the average size in the NHL. 5'9", 165. And not all of them were as quick as this guy. What's interesting about it is the ice surface. That size hasn't changed. The players have. The hitting is bigger and harder. And there is some talk that they may widen the ice surface by approximately three feet to open up the ice to have a little more room out there for the players to strut their stuff. What do you think about closing it all in like Boston Garden is now and making them all smaller? Uh, it would be fun to watch, but the players, you, you'd need taxi squads, Mike. You'd have to have three or four buses of players to show up for games. People would get just too banged up. The goal stick is behind the net. The goalkeeper is in front. They can't get it out yet, but now do. Casey able to retrieve his stick. Hall moves in. Pad stop. Vernon swept away, and it pinballed off Roberts. Able to keep it in was Duchesne. Detroit, Under six and a half now. Detroit is trying to play Coffee and Fatisov with the Fedorov line here in the third period. A unit of five to get offense. But it's not generating. Could not get by Fatisov. Coffee lays it ahead and here comes Shepard. With Draper breaking, it's rolled around behind. Casey punches it ahead. Chasse brings it on for St. Louis. Just when it looks like the Red Wings will get something going, all of a sudden play breaks down. The Blues keep it kind of slow. Yes, we've had 11 goals scored, six by St. Louis. Yet St. Louis here in the third period, especially the last 10 minutes or so, playing their best team defense. They played the whole game. They're very committed to it here. Slugged around behind. Doug Brown couldn't pull to the front. Zombo on him. Couldn't center because of Chasse. And again, the Red Wings retreat as the clock ticks down now to five minutes and 30 seconds to go. If you're just joining us, Brad Hall has four. Ray Shepard has two, including the first one. When it looked like it might start out as a Detroit afternoon. Well, it was very short. Hall short-handed, then twice on the power play, still in the first period. He's off, got away from a rocking hit attempt by Basil McRae, which he would have felt. It's Coffey bringing it on. For Primo, Keith Primo moving in, lost it off his stick, and behind Al McInnes was defending. Coffey flips one in front, loose puck, Primo trying to get to it. Down to the ice he goes, and Murray bearing up with it. Coffey's conditioning showing here, he's on the ice every second shift, and he makes it happen. He just hit Primo, who lost the puck at the last second. Gary Karkner, nice little pass on over to Burr. Knocked out of the air by Shanahan. Looked along for Brendan Shanahan, and the Blues bring it right back. 
Boy, a solid performance by St. Louis in a defensive role. Brett Hall has been held shotless in this period. But the onus is now on the Stars of Detroit. Because they're trailing by one. Just about every time we look up at the scoreboard, there's a different minute number there, and now it's four. Four oh seven to go in the third period. Scotty's team behind by one. You've got Mike Keenan, you've got Scott Bowman. The only team over 500 against Detroit Scott Bowman this season is Calgary. Calgary Flames have won three and lost one. St. Louis has won one and one against Detroit. Los Angeles has won one and one against Detroit. One win, one loss, one tie. St. Louis is leading here. Could they beat Detroit twice? Off he waits. Rather scarred Mark Perry, you saw the linesman ready to drop this. Lewis has prevailed and Roberts makes Detroit drop back. Coffee and Petisov still the defense pair for Scotty Bowman's Red Wings. Eiserman, Kozlov, and Fedorov. No changes there. He's going at him with the best and not breaking it up. Roberts flipped one in front, allowing it to go through was Coffee, but also breaking in was Tegan. Fedorov couldn't come up with that. Was he ever bulldozed by Roberts? Blues having a strong shift. Detroit with their big unit on the ice cannot get it going. Here's another good play by Tikkanen. And Roberts, number 15, in his ninth NHL game, make that 10th NHL game, having a very strong shift. That, they did everything they wanted to there. They never allowed this unit to get it going. Now the unit stays on the ice long here. And St. Louis has made a change. And a good change in terms of what Roberts was doing because LaPerriere is going to do the same thing. And here he comes with a puck. Ian LaPerriere got a pass across. It hit the post! Chassé hit the post with the shot! Kozlov moving back in. Hands over to Eiserman. Then to Kozlov. Gross! And a save made by Casey. Shepard turned aside by Casey. Eiserman and Fedorov still on the ice. A long, long, long shift. Two on one. Gilbert in. Save! Vernon punched it away. Twisting with it now is Keith Primo. Battled away by Gilbert. In by La Perriere. Just over two and a half to play, and it's Primo again. What a loud clank of the iron right near Mike Vernon. But the score is still six to five as it's pitched back in by Cicerelli. Offside stops the clock. Here's St. Louis, the two on one. Listen to it. Yes, the goal post popped to the left side of Mike Vernon. Very close to putting the game away with St. Louis. Yesterday, the Blues had a practice in which they scrimmaged. And they scrimmaged hard, and Mike Keenan harped at his players to change lines sharp. Get to the bench, get over the, over the boards, onto the bench, and get back on the ice quick. Make the changes concise. I think they've changed their lines brilliantly here in the third period, and Detroit has been caught at times with long shifts. Uh, here, Mike Keenan's complaining that Detroit hasn't made the change. The Thanks. hand is up by Rob Schick saying Detroit cannot change any more players. Now everything's put in place. Scotty Bowman, I think, is buying time for especially Paul Coffey, who's not on the ice, buying time without a timeout, timeout to get some rest. Detroit prevailing on the faceoff. Rouse lobs it. McKinnis grabbed it. Flipped one back for Shanahan, chopped along by Primo. Anderson can't get there because of the hook of, of the hooker of Cincerelli. Rouse tied up by Anderson. Right back ahead with it comes Primo. Outman and he wipes out. Creighton tried to brush it along. Anderson hit by Rouse. Vernon sets. Cicerelli takes. 150 left. Now the Red Wings will start to look toward getting Vernon off the ice. If they can't get another good attack in this flurry. They crunch the boards, but Tisov able to keep it. Swept it along. Steve Duchesne lobbed it ahead. Now Tikkanen. it. Rocks it to Hall. Couldn't get it to the front. Slava Patisov on a strong game. Connects back up to Kozlov. 120 to go. Coffee gliding in. Paul Coffee. Fit one off of Casey. Loose puck jam to the corner. It's Coffee throwing one in front. That's kicked out by Casey. Wrapped around now near Tikkanen. It. Kept alive by Patisov. Neutral ice they play. Still in the goal is Vernon. I think that bad angle shot by Coffee from almost behind the goal. He tried to bank it in. Federer! 
Attacker will not be on the ice. Face off deep in the Detroit zone. 27 seconds to go. Today's game was produced by Richie Zions and directed by Sandy Grossman. The studio was produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. We hope you've enjoyed this one. We sure have. Mike Vernon goes back into the cage for the faceoff. And here's Federoff. Casey's out above the goal crease, he backs in, Fedorov's cut off, has to go to the, to the right side of the goaltender, and Casey was waiting, a brilliant save, Fedorov has to go to his left, oh, Casey recovers, Fedorov cannot get the puck up high, that was a nice play by Norton, forcing Fedorov to one side. McGinnis fires one. 20 seconds left, Vernon striding to the bench. The extra man on Cicerelli, but it's sent back deep, and Fedorov will have to go to get it. The crowd starts the chant. Coffee with a pass to Cicerelli. Six to go. It's up the wing. Iserman flip one to the corner. Primo with two to go. The game is over. The St. Louis Blues have won it. In what was a playoff atmosphere this afternoon, Brett Hall put on a show. St. Louis tightened up in the third period to get themselves the one goal win. The final score, the Blues 6 and the Red Wings 5. We'll be right back. <laughs> 